Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we will talk about the Montreal Mafia. More specifically, we will illuminate what's been going on. We heard about the dealership that's been burned and we knew that it belonged indirectly to a Marco Pizzi according to police. And so we need to delve into the past of Marco Pizzi today. It will perhaps help us to figure out what the hell is going on, what are the sides, and which side perhaps he belongs to if we could figure that out based on evidence. And so before I go, as usual, fair warning, our show talks about made men in the Italian mob. And so I'd like you to realize that most of most Italians are hardworking, regular people like you and I. And so because we only talk about these folks, you might generalize. Just be careful of that. Now let's get to the news. All right, so today's episode is very, very important. Are you into the mob? Are you into mob news, Montreal Mafia, wherever you are in America or in Canada, and you want to know what's been going on, you're at the right place. Don't skip this video. And so I haven't read the articles yet, so we will read them together as usual. First off, we will look into this one because, first of all, you know it's in English. I usually translate them. However, it's too important that we look into the past. This article has so much of it in there. I only glanced over it really quick. I did not read it so that I could be with you and as, as an organic way of sharing my sentiments, not planned. So Montreal Mafia Project Clemenza screeches to a halt in 2017. It screeched to a halt for what reason? It says that their case cases tossed out was Marco Pizzi, a Montrealer alleged to be an influential figure in the Montreal Mafia. If you've heard about it, you know lately a dealership was scorched. Or no, they threw, they tried to scorch it. They threw something at it and it wasn't the first time either. So <laughs> he was clearly a target several, several times this year, at least twice. Not only that, we see in 2017, we will see, we'll read up about something that happened to him. He was a target before as well. Perhaps not at his dealership, but he was uh, there was a target against his life. This I can promise you, based on my memory. We have a uh, picture of him. He was 47 at that time, so we're six years ahead now. We, you can assume he's about 53 now. I'm assuming. So a leng lengthy invest. There was a lengthy investigation for Project Clemenza. Those of you who know. It was huge and targeted the Rizzuto family. And it says here that 11 men charged in the project had to have a stay of proceedings. Okay, what happened? We know about dumb Canadian laws, so this won't surprise us. It says included, included among the men who essentially saw their cases tossed out was Marco Pizzi. Another man who walked away free, clear of drug smuggling and conspiracy was Antonio Sia, is that how you say it? Sia Vaglia, 58, a Kirkland businessman. Kirtland, we just spoke about my previous video they just released today. We talked about West Island, Pierre Fon, Kirkland. I didn't mention Kirkland, but now you know Kirkland's around that area. Once again, it's ang it's like an ang Anglo-ish neighborhood. It feels a lot like Ontario, but it's far removed from Montreal. There is no subway train that goes there. You need a car or you take the, the train. It's like, a, you know, those, those trains that go to suburbs or whatever. They're a little bit of a hassle to take. They don't come that often except on prime hours. But it's a beautiful area. I, I lived. Uh, I didn't live in Kirkland, but I, I lived in the West Island once upon a time. Here we have it. So, it says the Kirkland businessman who used to own a cargo company based in La Salle. And then we have, so note, cargo company. They don't just associate with a uh, random schmo here. They, in order to import, in order to stash, in order to conceal, I would assume that that ceramic company is very useful. We see people get murdered in front of ceramic depots. And now we have uh, someone who owns a cargo company. Wink, wink. Then we have a Franco Albanese. 50, another resident of Kirkland, saw a state proceeding. No surprise. Not that I wish jail on anyone. You know, I'm just saying that our laws make no sense. And after a certain while, it gets ridiculous. Guys are shooting and killing people. And they, they get murder, they get they get convicted of murder and like in seven years they're already out in the street and now they're killing someone else and they killed a bunch of innocent peoples in the shooting. Like the one in Ontario 2019. So it's, that's why it pisses me off. And then Quebec judge uh, Flavia Longo agreed with Crown's request. Let's just keep going here, it's nothing, technicalities. Here, besides having been charged with drug smuggling in Project Clemenza, police have, have allegedly in the past 
have alleged in the past, sorry, that PZ was involved in drug trafficking in eastern Montreal. So now we, we get more details. Eastern Montreal, the eastern section of Montreal has a lot of junkies. I dare to say that most junkies live in the eastern part of Montreal. In here, and a lots of gangsters, etc. Here we have Pizzi, drug trafficking in eastern Montreal. A lot of the cocaine trafficking rings come from the east end. And take it from me. I know what I'm telling you. A conflict between members of street gangs and drug dealers with alleged ties to Pizzi is believed to have been behind an attempt on his life last summer. On August 1st, a car... Remember 2017, guys. This article is written in 2017. Remember that. On August 1st, a car Pizzi was driving was rammed from behind by another vehicle. Typical of hits. Happens often. In the mob wars. Two armed men got out of the vehicle, but Pizzi managed to run to safety before any shots were fired. Remember Rizzuto? They, they tried to kill him on the highway. He ran to a... What do you call it? He ran to a funeral parlor or something like that. And he asked to call the cops to save him. The irony. Kevin Rocheprin, 27, an alleged street gang member... Kevin Rocheprin, there you go, street gang member, 27 at the time, was arrested a week after the incident and was charged with assaulting PZ. Interesting, is it not? So, note there, near, note there right now, a, a, a street gang member tries, tries to kill a mobster. Who would have sent him? I don't know, I'm asking you. But you see the intermingling of street gang members that cannot join the mafia, but they are being... Uh, they are working as mercenaries. That's the best way I could put it. Mercenaries for either side. On May 17th, Rocheprin pled guilty to possessing firearms seized when he was arrested. But a stay of proceedings was placed on the assault charge. He was sentenced to an overall prison term of five years. Michel Meloche, let's see here. And, okay, blah, 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 technicalities. Look here. The drug trafficking probe began more than six years ago, but arrests in the third and final stage of Clemenza were delayed until last year. Our CMP had to set aside the investigation temporarily because, while it was underway, investigators realized they had evidence of who was behind the murder of Salvatore Montagna, a mafia leader who was killed in November 2011. Those who don't know, he came from the United States. He was a Bonanno captain, and he was—I think—he was expulsed, basically. And he came back to Montreal. He didn't speak a lick of French. He thought he was going to control the city. It's pretty hard to control a town. You don't even know when people are talking behind your back what they're saying. They could say "on va le tuer," and he would have no idea it's a setup or anything. I, I think that's a dangerous proposition. You need to be able to understand the law of the land. I mean, the people talking, you know, just so you can stay safe. Uh, the, the irony is that it's a French Canadian who, who picked him up and brought him to his death. And then, and, and, and to, and, I'm not talking about Desjardins. Desjardins' best friend picked him up. And you'll notice something else in these uh, mafia wars in Montreal. Very often, maybe it's an Italian mafia thing. They will, they will meet the guy somewhere in, say, downtown, somewhere easy. And they will pick, the, that guy will leave his car and parked in downtown. And then he'll enter another person's car who will drive, who will drive him to the, whatever location place they were to meet very interesting i've noticed this happened multiple times to people who were in the mob who were targets of who were targeted for death i've noticed that if it ever comes up again because i cannot remember which one another case whenever it pop up again remember my words i will bring it up and i'll tell you remember i told you about this and then you will have light bulbs coming up but let's keep going the main indictment filed in Project Clemenza last year illustrates how the investigation into cocaine smuggling intersected with the investigation into Montagna's murder. A conspiracy charge filed alleges at least 26 people were involved in a conspiracy to import cocaine into Canada. 26 people from February 18 to December 21st of 2011, including among the non-indicted alleged co-conspirators were Vittorio Miracci, Stephen Fracas, and Pietro Magistrale. All three men pled guilty last year to being part of a conspiracy to murder Montagna, the Desjardins clan. And messages intercepted during Clemenza revealed that Miracci was working in full partnership with Rena Desjardins. Yeah. Desjardins serving 14 years sentence. <laughs> Quote unquote, serving 14 years. He didn't serve 14 years. That's why I made the term Canada. What I mean by that, for those who don't know, it's not me trying to be an asshole here. It's that, think about the dumbest thing. Just think, what could we do? If you have many options to solve a situation, choose the dumbest option. That's what I mean by Canada. Duh. Don't even ask yourself. If it says 14 years, duh, he's not doing 14. 
He committed murder, duh, he'll be on the street very, very soon. Canada uh, evidence that was placed under the under publication ban up until Monday revealed that Antonio Guido, funny last name, 41 of Ottawa, one of the 11 men who saw the drug smuggling case come to an end in the Montreal courthouse on Monday, was spotted on November 26 of 2011, two days after Montagna was murdered in the company of Jack Simpson, the man who was believed to have pulled the trigger in the slaying. Guido was observed accompanying Simpson to a house on Queensbury Drive in Ottawa, forgive me, where Simpson hid, hid until his arrest. A short while later, Simpson is also awaiting the sentence for conspiring to murder Montagna. Oof, that was a pretty big read, but here's the main read. We needed the background information. So, we what do we see here? Pizzi is in, obviously, obviously, he's involved in a cocaine trafficking ring. He's, he, you could tell he's, he's a coordinator. He's a coordinator for the smugglers. He coordinates and he has a street captain, if I'm not mistaken. He's not mentioned it here. I think it's the next article. Let's go here. Now, that was 2017. Let's go forward in time now. 2021, at the heights of the shootings in, 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 in honestly, this was the heights of shooting in, in Quebec, in, Ca in the whole Canada as well. But particularly for us in Montreal, it was the height. It was shooting left and right. Remember, on our channel, I had a, I had a, a kid that I used to know. He got murdered. There was an, uh, there's another guy that I used to know. I think he got found in a trunk of a car. Someone here told us. Childhood friend that I knew. Then we have, um, not not mob, not mobsters. No, uh, a, a black guy, a black youth. Let's say, well, youth. He was probably in his 30s by now, at <laughs> mid 30s or something. But let's. And he was always up to no good. Unfortunately, may he rest in peace. But he already got a lifeline once. He got a lifeline once, man. So at the end, you have you you reap what you sow after a while, man. Now, let's go to the to the 2021, when there were so many shootings, right? Street gang members, etc. Crazy amounts. If you look at this article, it's going to tie it with the mob. And we just spoke about Marco Pizzi, and we, we knew that a street gang member tried to kill him, right? Okay, let's start here. Wave of shootings in Montreal. The police are asking the mafia to calm things down. Why would you ask the mafia to calm things down? with street gangs well perhaps because the street gangs get their coke from one source they're not the importers right and whoever controls the supply is pretty much controlling the money he's the key here that's why you see gregory woolley he's always attached to the hip to someone you, you understand what i'm saying it's not like in uh, british columbia here they absolutely need bikers or they need the mom they'll be attached to the hip and that's why it's so easy to become what I say. I like to use the term a cuckold. Okay, I'm not going to say more. Let's keep going. Thank you so much. This should be a lot better. Oof, I'm glad I caught it now. I would have went on and on and you would have seen half the screen. So it says here, an associate of the Rizzuto clan was approached by police to, uh, to, to uh, end or lower gun crimes. In other words, to ask them to stop in the East End. And notice this, for the shootings in the East End. So the mob, remember we just spoke about Marco Pizzi and we just deducted that he was a coordinator, if you will, <laughs> a leader, a coordinator of cocaine supply in the East End. And he's not dealing them retail, right? Who do you think deals them retail? Common sense. And in which area? We're also talking about the East End. The police want the shootings to stop in the East End. So how could they apply pressure? By speaking to their bosses, right? There you go. Now. Let's go down here. Police officers met an influential member of the Rizzuto clan, it says, to bring calmness back to the northeast end of the city, which had a wave of shooting in 2021. Look, first name that appears. Davide Barberio, considered the boss of the street, street boss, for the mobs, for the Italian mob, got message passed to him by the police in the, in the east end, Riviere des Prairies. Our investigative bureau has learned, Journal de Montréal. The investigator of the SPVM, uh, let me just see. Yeah, this is still, this is just talk. Uh, according to our sources, the message was passed to Barbario, and he says it also goes equally. They wanted to, to pass this message to Marco Pizzi, which would be his business partner. So you see, right there we have the link, Barbario with Marco Pizzi. 
leur territoire. It's their territory, apparently. So Barberio and Pizzi are at the head of one of the most important group, criminal groups in the, in the metropole, right? And they're being asked to come intervene to calm down tensions between street gang members. And we have bullets here in this car. Already I can count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 shots I can see on one side of this VUS. Uh, it says that their organization, yeah, same thing, nothing. Look at there, he's telling you that this sector of Rivière des Prairies is one of the rare sectors, anyways, in 2021, which is under the exclusive control of the Montreal Mafia, which, which, uh, which usually I guess it's trying to say is that it was dominated. The city, uh, the city usually is dominated by the Hells Angels. They control it, right? But in this case, this territory is mafia only. Auparavant, before the sector Rivière des Prairies, dans l'arrondissement Rivière des Prairies, in the in this area, let's just say, it was controlled by Salvatore Scopa, who was killed, as we know. We translated the documentary for you interesting isn't it so usually before it was controlled by salvatore scopa who we knew was a big time cocaine importer but this sector of the city has been ravaged for the last two years by by people killing each other crazy how has a uh, is this uh how you say is this a consequence is this like a chain of events following the his death we wonder in 2021 Un until this article so what they what did we have here we had the uh, 21st of october okay 21st of october i'm just gonna tell you what he's saying here so he says that until october basically he, they counted four murders and 15 shootings and look it says that the bullets hit the residences that had nothing to do with it you see innocent people almost would have got shot or whatever man and i'm all too familiar with that myself personally I've been on the receiving end of, it couldn't be me, man, but I've been targeted, I've been unintentionally targeted, not in 2021, but if I would have woken up in the middle of the night, I would have ate those shots, you freaking idiots, not you, not you, the listener. Organization Pizzi Barbario was equally well implanted, no, and I didn't live in that neighborhood. Uh, but my own in my own era this type of things always happened and I said look the organization Pizzi Barberio was equally well implanted in Montreal Nord so now notice they call the organization Pizzi Barberio these two men themselves have survived attacks in the recent years Barberio he says a, uh, a rising star in the mafia also nicknamed Baldi because of his bald head of course was shot by bullets in an attempted murder in Oh, it's in 2020, uh, 2021. They tried to kill, I remember that. September of 2021. They never found the guy who, who tried to kill him. And also, being an important associate of the Rizzuto clan, Pizzi and Barbario have contacts well established inside street gangs, they say. So, the guys who worked for uh, Scopa, they defected, I'm assuming. And I think Barbario also was a defector from, he used to work on the other side. And he eventually came to the Rizzuto clan and that's probably why they shot him his enemies just tried to kill him and then we know that a certain peace was established or so we thought remember in 2021 there was rumors of like okay things are gonna calm down now Desjardins is saying that the war is over that like they're not gonna keep going for sure why would you want to keep going you know that's that's my opinion when the police are watching you like this what's to win you're all gonna lose but we were wrong apparently remember for the first six months of this year it's been a pure havoc just as bad as before maybe not as many shootings but they're intimidating each other they're burning each other's properties they're telling each other you need to go you need to go you need to go that's what they that's what they've been doing remember like the, the amount of fires are insane by the way crazy huh the quebec's having these uh, forest fires absolutely nuts it used to be the uh, out west only now we're now it's finally happening in quebec unfortunately let's keep going uh, look at this on the 29th of may police officers observed two mafiosi in a restaurant in rivière des prairies in company of many members of the hell's angels of which martin robert there you go now it says an organization that's stronger than ever the organization Marco Pizzi and David Barberio, which are under attack right now, as we speak, without a doubt, 
no question about this. It says in 2021, they were stronger than ever. So what changed? What changed? Yeah, right. And it's, this is after it says four years after. Look at that. See, now it confirms the previous article. Four years after that they escaped the tentacles of the law. And this is what Montreal police note in the documents for 2021. And our investigative bureau could consult, it says. Now, it says the rising power of PC and Barbario coincides with their association for the past two years only. Remember that. With the Rizzuto clan. Lui-même redevenu le groupe criminel le plus dominant. Now he says it by 2021, the most dominant one was the Rizzuto clan again. And you could assume that as so because since these two work with them and they are meeting with Martin Robert, documented well, there's pictures, probably they took pictures, police are following them. You can assume all that. Why would the Hells Angels be meeting them, having meetings and lunches and, and things like that? You know, you just have to gotta read between the lines, man. So that that's pretty valid. And these now, but but something's going on. Something's going on. On les dit impliqué. Now it says we we say that they are implied in many spheres in the importation and distribution of drugs, loan sharking, and uh, money laundering, and uh, il and illegal betting. That's what he's saying. Online illegal betting, and and as well as being linked to many different elements of organized crime in other words the police are identify them behind a project a casino project look at this note this very well police identify them them in a police project and uh, no, sorry a casino project in kanesetake in the north shore of montreal that's an indian reserve and our investigative bureau had revealed their existence last april so April of 2021. In 2016, two men had, uh, who had passed long time in prison were stopped in the Operation Clemenza, which we just spoke about. These two men. The inquiry of the RCMP had brought about 40 arrest uh, arrests and seized 220 kilos of cocaine and $2 million in cash. You see the numbers of now we're, we're, we're getting familiar you're getting familiar with the numbers last week they found a stash with 156 kilo i just showed if you look the previous video i i'm gonna or i, I already uploaded today it's gonna show you that 10 years ago only one location they had bought, busted was 343 kilograms of cocaine that's what they're working with see that's how, how much they're working with it's good to know the size but, but the next year, Pizzi and Barbario were liberated of all accusations, of course. À l'époque, Pizzi... Uh, okay, let's just keep going. Look, at that time, clearly, it says that his group were doing business with a clan that was enemy with the Rizzutos. From his side, Barbario was from which organization? Ponytail. So he was working for Ponytail, a rival clan of the uh, arrival to the Rizzuto clan and he was and he was poisoned by cyanide in the penitentiary called Donnacona in 2013 if you guys want to know what Donnacona is all about we have a video uploaded a few days ago jailhouse confessions check it out ciblé deux fois targeted twice in August of 2016 Marco Pizzi escaped men men armed to the teeth who ambushed his Mercedes while he was driving in the East End. He managed to escape. In December 2014, he was sitting at a table with Tonino Calocia, a close of the Rizzuto clan, in 2014, in a restaurant in Anjou, so that's in the north-ish, north-ish of Montreal. When PZ went to the bathroom, with, this is PZ for those who are wondering what he looks like, so while PZ went to the bathroom, the shooter came inside the restaurant and he finished Calochia. But according to our information, PZ was also a target of that assassination, so they didn't manage to kill them both. Dang. These tensions seem to have subsided. 2021, remember, according to our police documents. Even if Barbaria was targeted last month, who are they? He was 51. So now he's about 54-ish. 
considéré par la police comme un importateur, considered by the police as an importer of cocaine and at the head of a zone drug trafficking ring in the East End. In order to sell it, he needs street gang members, right? Retailers to do the job associated to the Rizzuto clan. He escaped two murder attempts, one in 2014, one in 2016. Now we are 2023, and his dealership was burned, or they tried to burn it, forgive me, twice. And not twice like five years ago, twice lately, okay? Remember that. Arrested in 2016 in the Upper Clemenza, so we know all that. Here we have him right here, 42, Davide Barbario. Considered street boss, associate of the, of the Rizzuto clan, turncoat actually. So he worked for a ponytail, they killed his boss, and he had no choice, I guess he converted which is an insult for the other people, right? Who were on the other side, who are still alive. Don't forget that. And he says him too, he was arrested, but they, they released him obviously. And he was a victim of a murder attempt on the 21st September, 2021 in Laval. And now we talk about, talks about the street gangs that are at war, who they are probably getting their cocaine from him. Why I say this? They are in the area, in his area, you see? They're not importing it. They're, they're mercenaries for whoever's gonna make, help them make money and avoid going, going to work. The majority of the shootings happened in the northeast of Montreal. Saint-Cyr dans une guerre de deux gangs. So there's two wars, uh, there's a war between two members of the Red Faction, right? And they're probably, it, it, comes, it, goes, for, it goes for a long time. When you kill someone's best friend, e Someone that eat someone someone else loves considers a brother. They have no one else. They had poverty their whole life. They grew up together. They're not gonna forgive each other fast like that. And the tit for tat only makes things worse. It's gonna be never ending. Here we have names: Prophet Boys, Rivière des Prairies. That's the area of Pizzi, right? In Barbario. And then you have Zone 43 referencing the bus line they usually use the bus lines and in montreal north so remember this une guerre entre deux gangs rivière des prairies red versus montreal nord zone 43 remember that if you learn anything at all about street gangs that's the thing to learn and here it tells us le rappeur montréalais maca zo who was it says here openly flaunting his allegiance to prophet boys was one of the victims of the triple homicide. May he rest in peace. L'origine de ce conflit remonte. The origin of this conflict, it says, goes back to 2011, when the rapper in Zone 43, a member de, lorsqu'un rappeur, membre de, okay, a rapper who was part of Zone 43, Montréal Nord, André Louis Jr., 24 years old, was killed in Rivière des Prairies, according to police documents. What did I tell you? I didn't even know. See, I didn't even know. I don't have a good memory. Sometimes I forget. I probably read about this a long time ago, but I promise you it didn't even come up. I just get the feeling what's going on. They won't forgive each other. In September 2013, this one I do know. At, the, at a prison in Rivière des Prairies, a close friend of the Prophet Boys, Jean Romel Victor, Victor they, they savagely, I think they burned him inside of his cell, if I'm not mistaken. They burned him, they beat him to death by co-detainees linked to Zone 43. Very bad. There you go. All right. Selon le service de police criminelle, les deux gangs, according to the police, in other words, the two gangs were fighting each other. Look, two for the profits of the, of stupefiers, so for territory, right? One's making money, he's taking the customers, the fiends, and the other, the other doesn't like it. And they want that territory. And they commit sins against each other, man. They commit sins against each other. How dare you? And they, and it, 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 how you say, it launches a series of retaliation. And then someone loses their best friend. And then it's never ending. Then someone's in jail. Then they get revenge on him. You see where I'm going with this? Now it says, each one of these gangs is impl implicated in the sale of drugs. Retail level, right? And... This is a, not, what do you call this? A, I forgot the word, guys. Prostitution, let's put it like that. Sales of firearms and the dumbest things they could possibly do. I'm sorry. It says, displaying videos of their criminal activities on social networks. You guys are dumb as hell, man. 
You guys are so freaking dumb for that. Posting pictures on Facebook. I'm telling you this from experience, man. I'm telling you from experience. It's never changed. Ten years ago, I remember seeing pictures. Guys flaunting about going in BC. Shoebox. Taking pictures with shoebox like little children. You guys are fools, man. And they're all, they all, the police have no work to do. They already knew who hired who, who was working for who, who was trying to kill Desjardins' best friend. They didn't even look long, bro. And on top of that, they were texting each other while working and doing the job. You can't be more stupid than this, bro. Since 2019, uh, the violence has been coming back, it says, between these two gang members. Well, the two, the two, sorry, these two street gangs, forgive me. All right. Let's just keep going. Here it says, it's not the first time that the police approach influential criminals to ask them to intervene about a situation. As we know, some crafty one member here, shout out to him. He said that in jail, the Hells Angels intervened in the past two, three years, maybe four years. They, literally, the Hells Angels intervened in jail and gave both sides money in exchange for them to stop this garbage. You see what I'm saying? And then on one side, they split the cash equally between them, all members equally. The other side, the Gregory Woolley-ish side, only like two guys got out all the cash and they kept it cut their own. You can't make this stuff things up. If your leader is greedy, if your leader is a supremacist himself, and he's been treated like that by supremacists, he's not going to treat his underlings well, in my opinion. It trickles down. Now, it says that the SPVM between 2009 and 2010... They did this. They did go talk to influential criminals. So in 2009, 2010, when the cafes in in the Italians, ca Italian cafes in the Northeast were being targeted by fires, look at that. 18 criminal fires linked to the mafia. Thank you. Let's see what's going on. And the, look at this one. Crise du fentanyl. So in 2017, at the beginning of the fentanyl craze, it wasn't even the peak, guys. Remember, the peak came way after Look at that. The police put pressure on the Hells Angels because of the fentanyl in Montreal. We're going to have to give them a, a shout out for this. And here's what happened after that. Because there was heroin that was laced with fentanyl. And the Hells Angels got involved. And they started to kill off people who did that. No fentanyl. Good job, you know. At least. Going to give them a shout out. At least they did something right here. So I guess there's not supposed to be any fentanyl. Am I crazy? If I'm wrong, correct me. Has there been any fentanyl at all since 2017 circulating any of these drug rings? You guys let me know, man. And there we have it. Big ass article, friends. Hope you enjoyed this. What do you think? Do you think there's another mob war going on? Do you think we're hitting a new era? When? I'm only asking, not that I want this to happen, I'm only asking them, when do they need these two so badly that they are still alive? I'm curious, they need them. It seems like they're, they're being needed by the Rizzuto clan now. It's an almost, it's a must, they need them. Who's trying to kill them? Oh, wait, maybe the word kill is not the right word. Who's trying to scare them away? Is there any link at all with the woman, Claudia Yacono, who was killed the other, the other, uh, the other month? Rizzuto's sending a message to all their enemies. And could this could this fire burning be any way a message to say no we're still we're, we're not gonna bow down to you sicilians we're doing we have our own network we're gonna keep doing business as we have and you're putting way too much pressure on us you're trying to intimidate us to become the boss of all the bosses no way that's not gonna happen we can let coexist perhaps but we're not gonna bow down is that what's going on i don't know you guys illuminate me Thank you so much. Have a great one. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for the latest on the Canadian.